<laughs> you want to get to the phoenix. You want to become the phoenix. Hmm. You know what the phoenix is? The phoenix is a creature of pure fire. A creature is also not a creature. A phoenix is not an animal. A phoenix is not a bird. A phoenix is an element of fire. And it doesn't just exist in your imagination. It exists on higher planets, just as there are animals on this planet, on this planet there are also animals on higher planets. But you know, the phoenix is not, the phoenix is not your imagination, the phoenix is God's imagination. Everything is held together by God's imagination. But the phoenix is a special creation of God, in the sense it's designed to merge into fire, become ashes, and then come back to life again. How is that possible? Well, everything came out of fire, earth, air, water. Just as there are creatures that can live under the water, there are also creatures that can live in fire. Those creatures. It is an element of fire, and therefore fire can't destroy it in the same way that water can't destroy fish. But you want to become the phoenix, don't you? Huh. To do that, you have to merge with. Um. In order to do that, you have to merge with the primordial sand, which is um. With their breath. They can move it. We could draw out a metaphor here, couldn't we? We could say we could say that just as the phoenix merges with the fire, we have to merge with the breath in order to become one with the phoenix. In order to become one with the one. <clears throat> You're not with me in person anymore. That is why I have to put this information on YouTube. There is still this still that desire deep within you to become the phoenix. It is very deep. It has been covered over by many desires and many wishes. But it's still there, I can see it. It's still there. Mm. The phoenix. Phoenix. Hmm. Such a thing requires great willpower. There's a battle going on within your mind all the time, within everyone's mind all the time. The forces of heaven, the forces of earth, the forces of hell, they're all within your mind. You have to win the battle in order to become one with the Phoenix. If you truly want to be the Phoenix, then you have to win the battle within your own mind because there's a constant war going on. And the war is between heaven and hell and earth. Trinity. Three elements. Earth. Heaven. Which is air. And fire, which is hell. Those three elements have to be won. You have to conquer all three of those elements. And once you've done that, you conquer the other elements. And once you've done that, then you can be one with the phoenix, one with the primordial fire. That began. That began everything. And will one day end everything. There's no escaping it. Energy can come back here many, many times. It's got all these worlds.
it's rest like beads on the necklace. Of it. Pavati. Pavati, is it? Pavati's present. The love of Shiva. We sat on top of the mountain all day long in meditation. Lord Shiva goes in the weed. He smokes the weed at the top of the top of the highest point on earth, the top of the highest mountain. His wife is Parvati, the Lord, the Lord of compassion, the Lord of empathy, the Lord of kindness. Sweetness. She is so sweet, Parvati. Everyone that meets her melts, no matter how bad tempered they are, no matter how angry they are, everyone that meets her melts. She's the wife of Lord Shiva. And to merge with them, to become one with the four necks, you have to conquer that battle within your own mind. It's got nothing to do with the Indian Jiva. It's not teaching the way forward requires a much greater sacrifice than just belief. Your own mind. Your mind will destroy you if you let it. Or you can try to conquer it. Don't let it destroy you. The mind is so powerful. It can easily destroy you. In, in such when we're dabbling in the, in the mind when we're trying to unlock the mind when we're trying to use the occult when we're trying to use incantations when we're trying to use prayer when we try to use candles and different things like that when we try to use all these methods we're unlocking parts of our mind which haven't been unlocked for many many millions of years collectively if we do it as a species there's a lot that can go wrong, but there's a lot that can also go right. You see, you see how you unlock all, all that mind power. Or if you're in contact with someone, or if you have been in contact with someone that can unlock all that mind power, you'll feel it in your very soul. Your very soul will feel all that, all that power draining away because you're not in contact with someone that can access that power. You don't know how to access that power. On many of these videos, I've said how to access that power. But unless you actually practice it, you can't access that power. It requires great discipline. It requires constant, constant willpower, constant determination. Meditation is like walking on a tightrope. It's like walking on the edge of a razor any moment you can fall off or you can give up or you can be tempted by the desires of the world money lust sex riches power many many times souls fall off this rope this tightrope for these things but the phoenix is saying look what is possible the phoenix is meeting up with cap at three o'clock the phoenix is saying, look what is possible if you truly conquer your mind. If you truly become one with the elements. If you can merge the elements into yourself. If you can take them out of yourself and merge back into them. If you can unlock those parts of your mind, the phoenix is saying, look what is possible. Nothing can destroy you except for yourself. Your own mind can destroy you, but nothing outside of yourself can destroy you. None of them have the power to do this. This power comes from the self. It is the one power which is unquenchable, which is, knows no limits. It has no weaknesses. Lust is must be one of the most powerful weaknesses. And money and 
Oh, but all those things only give you temporary. In fact, if you crave those things, and what that's actually saying is that you're remembering that in the past you had that you had that joy all the time. So in some ways, turning to alcohol, turning to drugs is actually a good thing. Well, not a good thing because obviously you might get addicted to it, but it, it, is, it is a memory. You're memorizing, you're memorizing something from the past where you experience great joy. But if you can bring that into your present, if you can experience that all the time, then those desires will go. Because the soul only has one desire, and that is joy, bliss, constant happiness, constant peace. That is all the soul wants. That's, what, that's, that's it. If you can get those things, if you can achieve it with your mind, then everything else will leave.